Tom McGee, I'm the Chief Engineer here at Dead Air Silencers, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about Xeno, uh, why we developed this new mount system, and some of its features and benefits. Let's talk about why we brought out the Xeno. Um, we have listened to our customers, we know people want lighter weight alternatives, we know they still want precision alternatives. We've taken the things that we have, that we know and we love, with the chemo and we distilled down the most important aspects of we want to have that return to zero the high repeatability the high durability and the ability to handle hard use and we've made an alternative to that chemo chemo still is king when it comes to really ultra hard use if you want something that's never going to come loose if you want something that's highly adaptable and that's super rugged chemo will always win if you want something that's lighter weight, perhaps you're not going to be machine gunning, uh, but you still want something that's going to seal up, that is going to locate really well, have high precision, really great uh, taper on there to give you a return to zero. It, this, is, this can be used in really ultra precision cans and shooting to some hardcore shooting. And it gives you a really great balanced approach of some of the benefits of the chemo, but without all the weight and in a slightly smaller system. Let's uh, look at some of these components and talk about what they are and what they do. So first off, we have an adapter. This is designed to fit into the back of the suppressor. It has normal standard inch and 3 8 24 threads that will thread into the back of our Nomad and many other suppressors that are out there on the market now. It's pretty much become a standard to be found. Uh, that simply threads in. You can use tools to tighten it down. And then, of course, we have the actual muzzle device. In this case, we have a half 28 A1 style flash hider that is designed to go on just like normal. It threads on, it stops. You don't have to time it at all. It's uh, meant to be an omnidirectional type flash hider. All right, let's talk about what it takes to get this mounted and installed and uh, placed onto a rifle. So, first, we're going to start off with the adapter, tighten it down into the back of the suppressor, put some lube on there, make sure your threads are good. Take your, your uh, hook spanners, if uh, that's what came with your suppressor, in the case of the Nomad, that's what you get. And you can place these on here and you can give it a really good snugging. These are designed in a way that you can find just the right combination so that when you go to tighten these down, you have a nice high leverage effect that can be had. And you can tighten that down on there. So other options to you are, you could take an inch and an eighth socket, you can drop it right on there, you could take a strap wrench, you can tighten it down, you can really crank it on there if you're doing some hardcore use. And once that's installed in the back of the can, then with the muzzle device, thread it onto a barrel and tighten down. Give it about 25 foot-pounds, it's a pretty happy, safe place. If you get up over 35 foot-pounds, you kind of begin to see an accuracy degradation, just so you know. And to install this, you put it on, it tightens in a left-hand manner, so actually pretend like you're loosening it and this will thread right on and snug down. Let's talk about one of the major benefits of this design. Because it has left-hand threads, it does two things. One, it precludes you from putting on a suppressor that hasn't been fully tightened down. It may be in a loose uh, adapter situation where if you were to go and fire it, it's gonna loosen, you're gonna get a baffle strike, may shoot the suppressor off the adapter. The second is when you go to take it off, it's going to come off as a unit as intended it doesn't leave a part behind on the rifle so let's say that's loose I just hand tighten that into the back of that when I go to tighten this onto the muzzle when it tightens down and it makes contact with the taper inside the suppressor loosens on the adapter so now the adapter is no longer turning but the suppressor is so I would realize oh if something's wrong I better not shoot this and I keep myself from doing something stupid and the other thing that happens is if for whatever reason while you're shooting if it broke its torque in the adapter because of heat cycling um, uh, vibration due to the weapon system whatever is going on there when you go to take this off 
even if that's loose, so you saw that I was just able to, to, to loosen that right there, it's totally loose. When I go to take it off, it self tightens and it will now take that straight off and it comes off as a unit and now you can properly tighten it. You know you're aware of the situation. Let's talk about the adapter and some of the features and the benefits that are involved with that. So with this adapter, you'll notice it has kind of an extension on it. The idea is that you have plenty of tool area. If you have to wrench on this, you can do it. If you have to take this inch and an eighth socket, throw it on an impact driver, you're gonna be able to do that. You're gonna be able to knock this loose if it's carboned up and tightened inside the, inside the can because you've never taken the adapter out in years. Um, if it's on the rifle, and it's threaded on there and if you need to get it off with it all installed as one unit you actually have a tool feature on the back of the uh, flash hider and you can now unscrew the flash hider from the barrel if needs be let's go ahead and do this if it's loose while it's on there you can actually tighten it while it's still on the rifle as well so you get some added benefit with that as well. Uh, you have features for both hook spanners as well as you can put a crescent wrench on this, you can throw that socket on it. Um, on the muzzle device itself, you could use a normal armor's wrench or a three quarter inch plier, uh, sorry, three quarter inch wrench, and you're good to go. Let's talk about material choice on this. Uh, we went with a 4140 hardened steel, uh, chromoly steel uh, base material, and that gives you some pretty great added benefits for this type of application. Uh, you see uh, several uh, mounts that are out there in the industry are using 17.4, some of them raw and uncoated, some of them coated. What you get with each of those is a little bit of a compromise in what that material was intended to do. On the uncoated side, what you run into is a stainless steel that likes to gall when it touches other stainless steel that's uncoated. So if you're tightening these threads into the back of this 17-4 suppressor, if this were an uncoated part, you really run the risk of galling it. And once that's galled, it's seized in there. Uh, hopefully when it's cut out by somebody in a machine shop, you can save the threads and save the suppressor and chase out you know, any galling that's occurred in there, it may just completely destroy the whole system. It's happened, we've seen it, we don't want to deal with that. We've learned that that's a no-go for us. We're not going to do that to the customer. Secondarily, when you do coat 17.4, it actually draws back some of its corrosion resistance. And usually it's not a big deal. It's just not as optimal as you get with 41.40 when you nitride it. Uh, on top of that, you draw back some of the hardness out of 17.4 when you nitride it and uh, not always but it happens and one thing that you want in threads and on a taper you want that high hardness uh, it's going to save the threads if the threads get banged up if they were raw stainless steel when you go to thread it in they're going to go inside the suppressor um, with 4140 it's harder it's less likely to get banged up and on top of that, it's not going to grab and do some bad things to other threads if it does happen. And then when it comes to cleaning it, you're actually going to have a harder coating and a harder surface to deal with. So when it comes to scraping carbon or copper off of the muzzle device that builds up on there, you're more effectively going to be able to do that with this 4140 material. When it comes to length and weight of the adapter and the muzzle device, we're sitting at about 3, 3.2 ounces for some of the muzzle devices, that's about as much as it's gonna get. A half 28 threaded muzzle device gets kind of heavy because the small diameter of the thread leaves a lot of material in there. Um, and as we go along, we're gonna offer many other offerings. We have some brakes coming. Uh, we're gonna have some very minimalist mounts. All those are gonna weigh less and less as we go along. We started out with the most robust, hardcore use of a standard flash hider that we could think of that's universally accepted. This is gonna satisfy most everybody's needs and it'll look really good on your rifle. And uh, speaking of the adapter, its weight falls in at about 1.85 to 1.9 ounces. And that, from what I remember, is the lightest on the market right now. So when it comes to system weight of the suppressor, this is the one that's gonna win. Let's talk about the balanced approach of this design. Uh, the Xeno places the flash hider 
or muzzle device, whatever it's going to be in the right spot inside the suppressor. So rather than putting it right in really deep into the suppressor where it's right up against the blast baffle and it's going to cause a lot of erosion on that or it's going to give you loud can syndrome, um, what it does is it gives it enough room there that it's going to really minimize wear and the impact uh, on that blast baffle, especially if it's not stellite. And on top of that, it's going to just simply make it sound good. It, it makes a future-proof design where if we at Dead Air come out with a new design that's more compact, it's going to play well with it. If it's uh, another suppressor manufacturer where we can't control where they put that blast baffle, it's more likely to fit and it's more likely to sound good. It's more likely to not destroy your investment in that suppressor by causing a, a high erosion condition inside the suppressor. I want to say thanks for watching uh, and let me know what you think of this. If there's uh, anything else you want to see out there, what kind of muzzle devices you want to see, I'd love to hear from you. And uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching our video. Some buttons should be poking up right now. If you'd hit one of those, that'd really help us and keep me out of trouble with our marketing guy. Hit it. Come on, it's not that hard, dude. Work with me.